In our first video in our relationship series, we compared uh, anti-sleep and anti-play, which are both our double masculine animals, and we did a comparison on the conflicts that we personally experience in our relationship. This video will focus on the interaction between our demon SF animals, which are both double feminine, and we'll talk about the conflicts that we personally experience between them. Now we are shameless reality TV watchers. It's for science, we promise. <laughs> And one thing that we commonly see is a clash between FI and FE mm. and how these decider axes show interest. Now here's a clip on Love Island of two girls who appear to be savvy FI trying to figure out if a guy who is or maybe has FE is interested in them or not. From one surprise tongue lashing to another, Millie sets her sights on Elias. And like the Berlin Wall, the Titanic and Barnaby Joyce's reputation, it's all about to go down. So I'm actually so off you at the moment. Yeah, I think like, feelings mutual at this point. Well, not mutual. I think you're off me because I'm off you. Like straight to my face, you're like saying how you want to message a girl on Instagram when you get out. But you know what, like you kissed me in the stripper game. You asked me to the hideaway. When I asked you what your intentions were, you were the one who reassured me. So please excuse me if I thought that you might have been making a connection. Yeah, I was trying to, you're right. You were trying to, but then you straight away go and say, oh, I'm gonna hit that chick up when I get out on Instagram. It's one of those things, it's just like, I say a lot of stupid shit. You do, you say some stupid shit. And I understand that. You can't excuse being a wanker when you say dumb stuff and be like, oh, that's just me. You know, you, you like Kim, you like Francoise, you like me. You like this girl on Instagram? Like, who don't you bloody like in Australia? I'm so confused. Don't come in here and waste my time. That, to me, is a big waste of time. Okay. It's not a joke. It's not, like, it's my emotions. Yeah, you're right. I actually don't understand. I don't understand you at all. It's like a big mess. I don't know. It's hard to come back from what you just did and kiss someone right in front of me. And of then, course like, I kiss someone right in front of you because I don't want anything then, to do then, with you anymore. Then, well, then don't have anything to do with me. I just me. came over here because we have to live in the same house together. And you literally led me on and made me feel like you had feelings. Of course I want to kiss someone who actually gives a fuck about being here compared to someone who doesn't care. John came in here and wasted my time. I told you how angry that made me and then you just do exactly the same thing. It is literally a massive slap in the face. So calm as a bitch, I'll go kiss Justin and you'll get that massive slap in the face. I feel a slap in the face. Well oh, good, because it's not bullshit then. He was giving me nothing and that made me more frustrated. He was literally, where's the pillow? Like this and like rolling his eyes at me like that. And I was like, oh my gosh. And he, just, oh, he called me immature and I was like, that is it. That is it, I will show you immature. Immaturity, you're like, oh, I hit someone on Instagram when I get back. Immaturity is thinking you're God's gift to women and you're not. Well, I really think that's how I feel about myself. I think that's how exactly how you feel. Like, why are you here? Because my emotion's not meant to be fucked with. <sighs> so the interpretation here is that the two girls who seem to be FI are trying to figure out if this FE guy is interested in them because he seems to be sharing his emotions in the same way with everyone else in the villa. Now, we do know that this is a, a stupid reality TV show and like most people don't act this way. Hopefully. Hopefully. But um, this is just what we commonly see as a struggle between FI and FE yeah. trying to understand whether the emotions that have been communicated are meaningful or not. Now, we're not saying that there is any right or wrong way to express whether you like someone or not. But if you have a different decider axis, then you're going to expect certain behaviors from someone to confirm interest. Now, this can create a lot of confusion and misunderstanding between people. But before we go into the juicy bits and talk about our personal experience with these kinds of clashes, what is SF sleep and what is SF play? Double feminine SF play is, of course, made up of feminine SE and feminine FE. It's my third animal overall, so it's a demon, but SE is my second savior function. So while the play is my demon, the sensory is not. SF play is about gathering sensory information, the facts and putting them on a value spectrum. Who likes what and how much? SF play is really great for short-term physical problem solving. You have a good awareness of what's going on right here and now and how to navigate it. You feel generally less surprised by unforeseen things in the physical world because you're open to whatever, essentially. It's great for sharing what you like and connecting on that. And it's good for bringing people together. Personally, I wouldn't say that SF play or FE is impersonal, but it does have a strong outward direction and in general, a stronger need for expression. But especially when the feeling is a demon, there can be an unawareness of personal values. What are my values and what are my priorities might be a question that you don't even consider asking yourself. This can leave you without a personal compass and make you vulnerable to the latest and loudest trends and even to manipulation by others. Generally, you also rely more on others for processing your own emotions because you have a stronger need to express your emotions and see the mirror back. 
SF Sleep for me is made up of Feminine SI and Feminine FI, and it is the third animal in my stack, making it a demon. Now I see there being two parts to SF Sleep. So the first part is the kind of physical routines that make you feel good. So this might be like your diet, your exercise, the way you dress, things like that. And then the other part is the kind of past memories, which is the SI, that have strong emotions tied to them. So that's the FI part. Now I see both of these things as making up the core of the identity for someone in my quadra. Healthy SF sleep can build fantastic self-care routines. Mm -hmm. Now Mark Sisson is an example of this. Like I don't know how old the guy is, but he is in fantastic shape. Wes Watson is another example who has a routine that puts him in a positive emotional state, which then lets the work take care of itself. The idea is that a routine that influences your emotional state will then kind of open up possibilities for you to be creative. Now SF Slip can be incredibly particular about the sensory. Felix will know this having lived mm -hmm. with me. Uh, I can be very particular about the way the house is laid out, mm -hmm. uh, the way things smell, the things that I collect. It's very weird. Now having it as a demon means that these things are super personal and it can be really difficult for you to compromise on these things. If your SF sleep is a demon and it's double feminine like mine then it is also very movable. Now what this means is that I often forget the kind of rules or decisions that I've made for myself and I can be very all or nothing when it comes to routines because I feel like if there's one small interruption it just kind of ruins the whole thing and I have to start all over again. Okay, now let's get to the juicy bits. For the first eight months of our relationship, we lived on opposite sides of the world. Holly lived in New Zealand and I still lived in Germany, apart from like a three week visit that Holly had in Germany after six months. Mm -hmm. This meant that most of our communication took place via Zoom, but also via Messenger and Discord and stuff like that. This means sending pictures of what we did that day, what we saw, just little snippets of our days. Now shortly after we started dating, Felix went on his first OP meetup in Amsterdam, which was super exciting. Yeah. <laughs> he took a few pictures during the trip, and even though we were messaging consistently throughout his visit, uh, he didn't send them directly to me. He instead shared them on the main OP Discord to share with everyone at the same time. Now this stung a little bit because up until that point, the way we had been connecting was through sharing pictures of our lives with each other. And this trip was something that I very much wanted to be a part of, but couldn't because of the distance. Of course, I didn't mean to make Holly feel that way at all. Honestly, at the time, I just didn't really know what I was doing. I was still trying to figure out this long distance relationship thing. And yeah, I was a bit insecure and I was projecting too. We had only started dating a couple of weeks prior yeah. and we were still getting to know each other. By nature and by type, I am rather hesitant when it comes to communication in general. It has nothing to do with Holly and everything to do with me and being stupid. With the demon play, I was simply afraid that I might be annoying and that I might be a bother if I messaged her too much or sent her too many pictures at once. That's why I shared pictures with the whole community on Discord first, because I didn't want to come across as needy or annoying. And you didn't come across that way at all, for the record. Little did I understand at the time that I unfortunately neglected to make Holly feel seen and feel special. Now after I realized that I'd been slightly upset by this, <laughs> I had to give myself a little bit of time to calm down and think about what it was that I actually expected. So when I spoke to Felix, I kind of explained to him that I had automatically expected that he would share the pictures with me first because that was how we had connected on our relationship up until that point. Now this clash was not a huge pain point for me, but it was something that I did want to address early because historically, these are the kinds of small things that I would let slide and I would just let them build up until I blow up at the person for no apparent reason. In hindsight, it seems like the story affected me more than you actually, yeah. but I was really glad that you told me how you felt and you just clearly explained to me what you needed from me. I was more than inclined to give it to you and was very grateful that you explained these things to me and how you communicated that without heaping tons of blames on me. Mm. The painful part for me was realizing that I hurt you even if it was just a little bit because I had been a coward. It wasn't like I didn't want to give you more attention. I was much rather afraid that it wasn't what you wanted. Mm. But your willingness to have a difficult conversation gave us the opportunity to clear up this misunderstanding. Even though this is just a very minor miscommunication between us, we actually haven't experienced this again since because we were able to get to it when it was small and almost insignificant. And the communication was clear. 
Exactly. So if you are like us and have completely different decider axes, what can you actually do to avoid these miscommunications in the future? As we mentioned in our last video, consciousness does still apply. You need to figure out what it is that you need from another person when it comes to showing attraction. Then you need to explain this calmly. And yes, I know that this is difficult and it's especially difficult if you've got demon feeling, but you need to make sure that you are separating the person from their actions and explaining what you need without placing a whole heap of blame on the other person. Yeah, don't make the other person the enemy. Yeah. A helpful technique that I learned in a communication workshop when giving feedback is using the CAR framework. So C is context. Now this is where you describe the situation and what has happened. A is action. So you just explain what the action was. And R is result. This is where you describe the result from the action from your perspective and how it made you feel. If you have FI, you could explain that feelings are to you personal and that if someone is sharing them with others in the same way, that can feel very offensive to you. If you have FE on the other hand, explain that while your feelings are still personal to you too, you connect to others by sharing positive emotions and having them mirrored back to you. Mm -hmm. For the deciders especially, keep in mind that while you do this car method explanation, to separate the person from their actions. So you're not mad at a person, but you might be mad at something they did. Yeah. And make it explicitly clear that what you're describing is simply your subjective interpretation of the situation. It's not the whole truth. It's also super important to stay open to the other person's point of view and not lead with blame and not put judgment on them. It's just simply coming from your perspective because the majority of clashes really comes from misunderstanding and not from any kind of malintent. And the best thing about a calm method is, is that you can use it without needing the OPS language at all. 